What's up, CBS Sports HQ YouTube fans? I'm Eric Casilius, and I'll be breaking down the NFC North division today with futures, picks, props, and more. Here we go. Yeah, Green Bay, I'm Eric Casilius. All right, it was a weird offseason. There was strife between the quarterback and the team, and they made up, kind of. But remember this, when you fight with your spouse, sometimes when you make up, there's lingering resentment. Did somebody say something that they can't take back? Don't ever say anything you can't take back in a fight. I wonder, and I wonder how this plays out. They're at 10 and a half. They played the easiest schedule in the NFL last year, projected to play the fifth easiest this year. Uh, 10 and a half feels about right. I guess I'd go 11 before I'd go 10. Now, when you look at the player prop, my long shot player prop that I love here, how about Devontae Adams to lead in touchdown reception? Plus 900. He had 18 and 14 games last year. If he plays 17 games, and so does Rodgers, why am I getting basically nine to one odds on this? Give me Devontae Adams plus 900. Now, in terms of personal props, I'm gonna play Aaron Rodgers under. A Couple of reasons. One, every time he has a big year, the next year seems to fall off. Two, the yards are too high. 45, 50 and a half. All right, our sports line projection says if he plays all 17 games, he doesn't get there. If he doesn't play all 17 games, there's no way he gets there. Last year, he's the MVP. He had 48 touchdowns and he only had 42.99. He wouldn't even get there. So the only one time in his career in the last 10 years has he gotten a 45, 50 and a half. I I'm gonna bet against that happening. I love the under on the yards with Rodgers. I don't, by the way, maybe get a snow game late in the year that could end up hurting him or some weather up there. Uh, I'll also play against Aaron Jones. I know he's a touchdown machine, 30 touchdowns in 30 games. But if you look at the injury index, he's the number one guy to be injured and miss time. Three and a half games projected. Plus they have A.J. Dillon. The touchdowns should go down. Uh, he's a guy I think that gets picked a little bit too early. Um, I do like Robert Tanyan more than most. Do you want a shocking fact? Robert Tanyan last year caught 88% of his targets and caught every pass thrown to him inside the 10, 7%. That is the best percentage by any tight end in any year in the history of the NFL. Sneak him, grab him when nobody's looking, late, second tight end, bye week injury replacement, he'll make you look good. Yeah, Bears, I'm Eric Casilius. Chicago's been the even Stevens the last two years, eight and eight and eight and eight, yeah, okay, fine. They did make the playoffs last year, but then lost the playoff game, so I guess technically they actually had a losing season, but made the playoffs, which is weird. It's also weird that the only franchise to never have a 4,000 yard passer, to never have a guy throw 30 touchdowns. Because they're not like an expansion team. George Hallis, Bronco Nagurski, they've been around longer than a minute. They also don't have a playoff win in the last decade, hoping to change that. I'd say they won't. Number is seven and a half. I'll lean over. I, I think eight and nine is more likely than seven and 10. And here's one thing if we look at the schedule. No back-to-back -back road games. By the way, the last three teams have no back-to-back -back road games, all made the playoffs, and kind of unexpectedly. It's a big advantage to not have to play back-to-back -back road games, and that's where you are on this schedule. Fantasy-wise, Allen Robinson. Last two years, only DeAndre Hopkins has more targets. And guys who get targets and receptions, it's like the lottery. You know they say? You can't win without a ticket. Well, he gets lots of tickets. And I like guys that get lots of tickets because they have lots of chances to do very good things Allen Robinson always seems to find his way onto my fantasy team. Uh, David Montgomery, he's a bully running back. He's a matchup guy. Don't be afraid of him. He had 438 yards in just three games last year. He's averaging seven rushing touchdowns a season. And with the rookie quarterback, Randy Dalton, he may get more. With the extra game, his total is only six and a half rushing touchdowns. He would have to get hurt to not reach that. I'm going to bet him over six and a half. So I want Allen Robinson on my team. He's going to go way too late. And I'm going to play David Montgomery over on the rushing props. I think the Bears are in for a slightly better year than most people think. Yeah, Vikes. I'm Eric Casilius. Last year, Minnesota disappointing seven and nine out of the playoffs. Ooh, got embarrassed on Christmas by the Saints. Ooh. And as a result, people sort of have a bad taste in their mouth. I think this is a good bounce back team. I liked them better at eight and a half. It has now ticked up to nine, but I'll take the over with the Vikes. I actually like that make the playoffs plus 110 as well. Uh, win the NFC North plus 250. Love that one. If Green Bay implodes, if there's resentment, if Rodgers doesn't have a good year, if he gets hurt, this is the team that's going to pick up the slack. Plus 250. Love it. You know, Kirk Cousins, 
people just seem to want to bang on Kirk Cousins, but he's not the problem. Uh, he was top six last year in touchdowns and yards. He had 35 touchdown passes last year. He was very good. The defense was beat up. In fact, when they played against the Saints, only one starter that was on the field that day is going to start this year. The defense all comes back. Cousins isn't the problem. He's going to be fine. This team's going to be fine. Fantasy-wise, I like Herb Smith. Last quarter of the year, without Kyle Rudolph, the tight ends caught 30 passes. Herb Smith could be in line for a huge jump. He's a great, 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 great sleeper. If you don't get one of the big tight ends, he's the guy you want to target. You know I love Justin Jefferson. I'm a little cautious with Dalvin Cook. I'm worried about the injury. He has missed multiple games every year of his career. And last year, he had a league-high 29 carries inside the five. Probably won't get that many this year. Touchdowns should come down for Dalvin Cook. Oh, by the way, you want a shocking stat? Adam Thielen had 14 touchdowns last year. Go ahead, look it up. It's gold. Yeah, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. Okay. I'm Eric Casilius. You got Dan Campbell. He's going to be biting kneecaps. And look, you're going to have him for a while. You got a six-year deal. So you're not going anywhere. He's projected to win five games this year. I kind of like the under. I can't see them going six and 11. Can you? As a matter of fact, my team prop, I'm going to bet Houston and Detroit to finish with the worst record. If either of them get there, I win a nice little chunk of change. Who else can have the worst records? Is it going to be Detroit or Houston? I love that team prop. The offense is bad. The defense is worse. In fact, they were next to last pretty much in every single category defensively. So where's the value going to be if they're going to be in some shootouts and they're going to be behind because garbage time counts? How about TJ Hawkinson? He was top 10 last year in tight ends among yards, receptions, and touchdowns. And Detroit only has one receiver back, and it's Quintez Cephas. Yeah, that's right, Quintez Cephas. Everybody else is gone. They cleaned house in the wide receiver room. That's your guy right there. And Jared Goff will find the receiver. He's your new quarterback. But he has a bad offensive line, and he has been very bad without a great line. Anthony Lynn is a new offensive coordinator. He's going to have some work to do. DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams, I don't particularly love either of them. They're solid guys but let somebody else have them. They're going to go too early. Restore the roar with the Honolulu Blues next year. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.